Hello friends, welcome to BA semester 1 English course core compulsory paper number CC102 class. Today let us begin with the first topic of our first unit in this paper. In this paper as in the introductory uh, lecture I mentioned that this paper is divided into four units. The first unit carries three important topics that show you the beginning of the history of English literature. The title of uh, this paper is British Poetry 14th to 17th century. Chaudhmi Sadi Thi Sattarmi Sadi Sudini uh, British Poetry means poetry written and published by British writers is to be studied in this paper. Now, uh, the, the title of the first topic is introduction to the age of Chaucer. Who this Chaucer is? Let us try to understand. But before that, uh, let us see uh, what these ages are. Uh, in this century, uh, what is the name of the age uh, from where the history begins? In the next slide, you can see the list of the ages, uh, the important periods in the history of English literature. Uh, the first name written here is the Old English. Old English period from 450 to uh, 1066 and the Middle English period is 1066 to 1500. Uh, in Gujarati, we call it 450, Iswisan 450 thi, Iswisan 1500 sudino, che ene abde be bagma vecho che, Old English ane Middle English ma. Away, Old English it le je Angreji basha, tare apne hal jui reachi, enakarta enu je mood, juno sorup che, ene Old English kishu, that is Old English. Then it has been reformed and transformed uh, towards modern English that is the Middle English. And then the next period onward we have the Modern English. So the third name mentioned here is the Renaissance period from where we find the uh, beginning of the modern English language and literature. So, uh, Renaissance period that is 1500 to 1600 means the year, years 1500 to 1600 that is known as Renaissance period. The second uh, name is the Elizabethan period uh, in the same era means the Renaissance period is the later uh, half of the 16th century that is known as the Elizabethan period from 1558 to 1603 that is the Elizabethan period. Um, Elizabethan period is the period of uh, the rule of Queen Elizabeth in England. Then the period that comes uh, that follows is the Jacobian period it is from 1603 to 1625. Uh, the next one is Caroline period that is from 1625 to 1649. Then Puritan period is from 1649 to 1660. Then the, there is restoration period that is from 1660 to 1700. Up to here we are supposed to see in this paper the, the ages that, that uh, follow in this, uh, in this paper from, uh, British poetry from 14th to 17th century. 
so 17th century is up to here from 17, uh, 1660 to 1700 means up to restoration period we are supposed to see. So Elizabethan age, Jacobian period, Caroline period, Puritan period and restoration period. This is the, uh, the hierarchy of the ages or the periods of history in English literature. Then the following periods are Augustan period, Romantic period, Victorian period, modern period, then comes interwar period. Interwar period means the uh, period of the two great world wars, interwar uh, period. Then uh, between the two uh, world wars, then comes the mid 20th century literature that is from 30, uh, 1939 onwards. Now the history of English literature has been divided into these periods. So uh, our study will comprise uh, according to the uh, ages or the periods. So the history will be studied like that. Now the name of the paper that is British poetry. In English literature, we have um, three major genres or forms of literature, uh, drama, poetry and prose. So in this paper, we are supposed to study poetry, poetry written and published uh, by the British writers uh, during this, uh, these 400 years roughly speaking. Uh, from 14th century to 17th century. So the time span is divided into uh, six ages here, uh, Renaissance, uh, Renaissance then it is uh, divided into Elizabethan and Jacobian period, Caroline period, Puritan period, Restoration period. So these are the age, uh, periods or ages from where we have selected several uh, poets and the poetry written by them uh, will be uh, studied in this paper. Uh, you will be introduced different poets with their representative poems. Now who this Chaucer is? Uh, we are mentioning the name that is age of Chaucer, age, age means yug. In Gujarati, we call it Yug, era or period. So, age of Chaucer. The title of this topic is Introduction to the Age of Chaucer. In Gujarati, we, we call it Chaucerna Yugno Parichai. Ena vishay ni mahiti apde aanya jovana chiye. The characteristics of this period means A Yugma Chaucer ane ani sathe thai gayela mahan bija lekhako ane kavyo poets as well as the writers uh, will be introduced to you and the major characteristics etle ana mukhya mukhya lakshano eni charcha apde a uh, topic ma karishu so uh, now let us move to the next slide <coughs> introduction to the age of chaucer now here you can see the picture who this gentleman will be obviously it is Geoffrey Chaucer Chaucer the name itself is uh, suggestive of lot many things uh, it has a very great importance in the history of English literature now the first uh, term that comes to us that is medieval period or middle ages then we will move towards to uh, modern era so old period medieval period and the modern period so medieval period is from the 5th century to the 15th century lagbhag 5th sadi thi Pandarmi Sadi Sudino Samai Gaalo Chhe Ene Medieval Period Athwa Toh Middle Ages Tarikhe Oda Thama Aave Chhe In English Literature Or 
English European uh, culture medieval period has uh, its own importance it has its own characteristics and and it has its own history and it has uh, uh, its impact on the later years that we are going to study uh, it began with the fall of the western roman empire and merged into the renaissance ane avu kai sakay ke western roman uh, empire na patan thi shuru thayelo roman empire nu patan thai ane te panchmi sadi thi shuru kari lagbhag 400 ne 476 476 થી શરૂ થઈ અને ચૌદસો ને ત્રેપન વન થાઉઝન્ડ ફોર પીરિયડ ઇઝ નોન એઝ ધી મિડિયબલ પીરિયડ ઓર મિડલ એજીસ ધીસ પીરિયડ હેઝ હિઝ પિક્યુલારિટી એન્ડ ઇટ્સ કેરેક્ટરિસ્ટિક્સ એન્ડ ઇન ધીસ પીરિયડ વી હેવ the author or the writer or the the greatest poet is geoffrey chaucer and the period of this uh, great poet or great author geoffrey chaucer is from 1350 to 1400 1350 to 1400 is the period known as the age of chaucer uh chaucer was born in 1343 1343 ma eno janma chhe ane 1400 is the year of his demise his death so he lived for 57 years 57 varsh ni umar darmiyan ene khub agatya no sahitya sarju this writer this poet he contributes uh, contributed to the welfare of the society to the uh, modification and change in religion culture and literature and even lang- language so his contribution to english language and literature is very very noteworthy it is very very important for all of us so uh, his name is to be remembered for the beginning of the uh, modern english language as well as beginning of the modern english literature now uh, the age of chaucer that is from 1350 to 1400 is named after the greatest writer geoffrey chaucer the first significant literary age in english literature it is the first significant significant means important literary age ages we have but we are talking about or uh, we are basically interested in the literary period means whatever uh, uh, important events that takes uh, takes place in the uh, growth and development of literature that is quite noteworthy for all of us and uh, we must remember that literature produced during during any period that is the representation of what is being uh, uh, what is going on in the society literature is the presentation of life literature is the presentation of the things that are going in the society so Uh, the literature produced during this age of chaucer is the mirror reflecting the events and incidents that took place during this period uh, it uh, inherit as uh, it sorry it uh, it heralded a new era of learning now we are going to uh, study the characteristics of the age of chaucer so along with this we are also going to study two important things uh, related to this era that they are two important movements or uh, revolutions 
they are known as renaissance as well as reformation these are two important topics of your syllabus that we are going to study in the uh, days to come in the uh, next uh, uh, semesters or next papers we will see it but before that we should have a very brief idea here uh, to understand the age of chaucer now the first word that comes to you is the renaissance renaissance uh, can be explained in gujarati uh, as nav jagruti if you have studied uh, the history uh, in your um, school years you must have come across the word nav jagruti in gujarati uh, punar uday renaissance can be explained in the terms that it is the reawakening or the rebirth of uh, the le new learning the old classical literature produced in the old period ancient period was revived or regenerated reinvented translated and made uh, easily available to the common people સામાન્ય લોકો માટે પ્રાચીન સંસ્કૃતિમાં લખાયેલું ખૂબ અગત્યનું મહત્ત્વનું સાહિત્ય તે મધ્યયુગના એટલે મિડિયવલ પીરિયડના લોકો માટે સામાન્ય લોકો સુધી અવેલેબલ કરાવવાની જવાબદારી ચોસર અને એની સાથેના ઘણા બધા લેખકોએ લીધી ધીસ રિસ્પોન્સિબિલિટી વોઝ કેરીડ આઉટ બાય ધીઝ રાઇટર્સ ધીઝ પોઈટ્સ Uh, very faithfully and they could bring awareness into the society and this process of bringing change and awareness into the society is known as the period of uh, or the movement of renaissance nav jagruti so here in the in this slide in the uh, very uh, second line second point we have mentioned that it began with the fall of the western roman empire and merged into the renaissance means the medieval period it began with the western europe empires uh, western roman empires fall and it merged means it ended with the renaissance so uh, let us try to understand renaissance brought light renaissance brought awakening enlightenment a nav jagruti e પ્રકાશ લાવવાનું કામ કર્યું શેમાં પ્રકાશ લાવવાનું કામ કર્યું તો જે મધ્યયુગ છે કે જેને અંધકાર યુગ તરીકે ગણવામાં આવે છે કે જેમાં અંધકાર પ્રવર્તે છે અંધકાર મતલબ કે અજ્ઞાન કે જેની જ્યાં અવેરનેસનો અભાવ છે અવેરનેસ નથી એ અંધકાર છે ઇટ ઇઝ એક્સ ઇટ ઇટ શુડ બી અન્ડરસ્ટુડ લાઈક ધીસ દેટ વોટ એવર ઇઝ નોટ ક્લિયર વોટ એવર ઇઝ નોટ નોન ટુ ધી પીપલ ઇટ ઇઝ Uh, darkness so uh, renaissance brought light among the uh, european community european society european culture and literature as well as european religion the religion was prevailing that is uh, that was roman catholicism uh, there is a need to change or rather transform or rather uh, bring a transformation in religion also because religion was uh, not good it was corrupted dharmani babat ni baat kariye to ema ganu budu corruption etle bhrashtachar pravartto hato and this corruption needed to be removed from religion and it needed to be changed to uh, new modified religion this movement of bringing reform to religion means bringing reforms to roman catholicism was known as reformation and it resulted uh, into uh, a new uh, new segment of religion 
that was known as protestantism the word protestantism comes from the uh, verb that is protest to protest means virod karvo so roman catholicism was protested by a leader a religious leader that uh, whose name was martin luther he protested the set rules of roman catholicism brought some light and awareness among the uh, british people and suggested several reforms and with this reformed state of religion it is known as the, the movement is known as reformation and ultimately a new sect in gujarati we call it sampradaya dharma no ek navo sampradaya udbhavyo enu naam chhe protestantism those who protested against the set rules of roman catholicism they were known as protestants and the sect was known as the uh, protestantism now this process is known as reformation so these are the two simultaneous uh, movements conducted during this period so the uh, period of uh, 14th century and the 15th century these 200 years are the years of uh, renaissance as well as reformation so these two important movements continued during this period and it resulted into uh, the reform in the society uh, uh, regenerated uh, regeneration of new culture in european society european uh, environment so these are the two important terms to be understood and remembered for the development of uh, english language and literature now let us move ahead this is witnessed many social political and religious challenges uh in the previous point we we saw that it heralded a new era of learning renaissance brought new learning to the society and that is why it is said that it heralded herald means uh, in gujarati we have a very good term chadi uh, pokarvi means to say about the uh, coming change um, જે રીતે સવાર પડે એટલે કુકડો સૂર્યના ઉદયની છડી પોકારે કે સૂર્ય ઉદય થઈ રહ્યો છે એમ અહીંયા રેનેસાન્સનો જે સમયગાળો છે એ સમયગાળાએ સમાજમાં આવી રહેલા પરિવર્તનની છડી પોકારી સો એજ ઓફ ચોસર બિકમ્સ ધી પાયોનિયરિંગ ઓર ધ પાયોનિયરિંગ પીરિયડ ઓર ધી બિગિનિંગ ઓફ the new era it witnessed many social political and religious challenges when there is a change when there is a period of development uh, various challenges are sure to come so far as social political and religious changes are concerned it is the period uh, the period was full of complexities complexities uh, are also pa- a part of development or transformation social political religious economical all these uh, complexities were faced by all these writers social leaders philosopher uh, philosophers and poets all of them they faced all kind of complexities uh, in their uh, lifetime and in in their working uh, it is the meeting ground of the medieval period and the renaissance as i have mentioned earlier that this period means the period of geoffrey chaucer 
इज द मीटिंग ग्राउंड मीटिंग ग्राउंड एट बने युग त्या भेगा क्या क्या बे युग तो मीडियवल पीरियड एंड दी मॉडर्न पीरियड सो इट इज द रेनेसांस एज वी वी ट्राई टू अंडरस्टेन्ड रेनेसांस इज द बिगिनिंग ऑफ द मॉडर्न पीरियड सो मीडियवल पीरियड एंड रेनेसांस दे मर्ज टूगेधर इन टू दीस एरा ऑफ जफरी चौसर द ओल्ड एंड द न्यू ट्रेन्ड्स स्टूड टूगेधर इन दीस पीरियड इन दीस वन पीरियड आ एक युग में तमने बे ट्रेन्ड बे प्रकार ट्रेन्ड साथ जवासे कोईपण आई एक वच्चे लाइन जो आप कोई बे स्टेट वच्चे कई इंटरनेशनल लाइन जो है तो बने तरफ ए लाइन की बने तरफ तमने मर्जिंग जवाब मे कि जेमा एक प्रदेश की असर बीजा प्रदेश में जवाब मे बीजा प्रदेश की असर आ प्रदेश में जवाब मे एम आइधर वे बोथ दी कल्चर्स आर मिक्सड टूगेधर लिटरेचर ऑल्सो केन बी सीन इन दीस पर्स्पेक्टिव so this is the meeting ground of medieval as well as the renaissance period now let us go ahead the medieval mind believes in spirituality and abstract ideas whereas the renaissance lays emphasis on the sensuous and the concrete now when that this is the uh, meeting ground of two different era uh, let us try to see what is the difference in these two era or era means yug age medieval period and modern period or renaissance period so what is the basic characteristic of the medieval period the basic characteristic is uh, can be explained in these terms the medieval mind believes in spirituality spirituality એટલે आध्यात्मिकता धर्म केन्द्रीय समाज है आध्यात्मिकता बेजिक तत्व है कि जे तमने सामजिक स्तर पर तमने फैलायेलू अथवा प्रवर्तमान सतत देखाया करें सो स्पीरिच्युअलिटी बिकम्स द इम्पोर्टंट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ दी मीडियबल माइंड सेट एंड एब्सट्रेक्ट आइडियाज एब्सट्रेक्ट आइडिया मीन्स एब्सट्रेक्ट मीन्स अमूर्त That that is not concrete. जैसे आप डे physically feel करी शक्य है, अनुभवी शक्य है, ये वो नथी, ऐने आप डे abstract कही शु, अमूर्त तो छह, जैसे मूर्ति न होए, ये प्रकार ना विचारों, ये प्रकार ने अभिव्यक्ति, ये प्रकार नो वातावरण, अपन ने medieval period में जुआ मरे शे. So the medieval mind believes in spirituality and abstract ideas, whereas Renaissance, the, now see the contrast. रेनेसांस लेज एम्फेसि ऑन दी सेंस्युअस एंड दी कॉन्क्रीट कॉन्क्रीट इज द ऑपोजिट ऑफ एब्सट्रेक्ट कॉन्क्रीट इज दी ऑपोजिट ऑफ एब्सट्रेक्ट एब्सट्रेक्ट एट अमूर्त और कॉन्क्रीट एट बिलकुल जेनी मूर्ति है जेने भौतिक स्वरूप आप जी सकी अड़ी सकी उपयोग कर भौतिक वस्तुओ म विश्वास धरावे एने सेंस्युअस है भौतिक लागण भौतिक अभिव्यक्ति भौतिक सुखो भौतिक वस्तुओ आ बदा में मानवाड़ो जो समयगाड़ो है एने आप रेनेसांस पीरियड कही सो फिजिकल एक्जिस्टन्स अने सेंस्युअलिटी आ बने वस्तुओ ए रेनेसांस की परिचायक है so renaissance is the uh, period of uh, sensuous feelings and concrete existence these two terms are to be understood for renaissance existence uh, the medieval mind supports communism while the renaissance advocates the individualism now this is the difference of medieval mindset and the renaissance mindset why i am explaining this the this difference between the two because the difference between the two 
becomes the characteristic of the uh, the uh, age of Chaucer, and that is why it is necessary for us to understand the difference between the two terms or the two uh, time zones. The medieval mind believes in spirituality and abstract ideas, whereas the Renaissance lays emphasis on uh, sensu on the sensuous and the concrete. The medieval mind supports communism while the renaissance advocates individualism now two more terms you are supposed to understand communism and individualism communism believes in the community communism એટલે સામ્યવાદ આપણે ગુજરાતીમાં જેને કહીએ છીએ સામ્યવાદ નો મતલબ એવો થાય કે જેમાં બધું જ સમૂહનું હોય બધા જ લોકો સાથે મળીને કામ કરે અને જરૂરિયાત પ્રમાણે પોતપોતાની નો વપરાશ કરે આ પ્રકારની માનસિકતામાં માનતા હોય દે આર નોન એઝ કમ્યુનિસ્ટ કમ્યુનિઝમ ઇઝ ધ સોશિયલ સ્ટ્રક્ચર નાવ મિડિવલ પીરિયડ ઇઝ બિલીવિંગ ઇન કમ્યુનિઝમ વેર એઝ ધી રેનેસન્સ પીપલ દે બિલીવ ઇન ઇન્ડિવિઝ્યુઆલિઝમ ઇન્ડિવિઝ્યુઆલિઝમ મીન્સ in gujarati we, we can understand it uh, in the terms of uh, vyaktivad ke jema vyakti kendri samaj bane che darek e darek individual uh, has it uh, his own importance so uh, everything is owned by individual so in the earlier period it was owned by the uh, community means uh, સમાજ દ્વારા જે સંચાલન થતું હતું અને સમાજ દ્વારા જેનું જેનું નિર્વહન થતું હતું એ બધી જ બાબતો હવે વ્યક્તિ કેન્દ્રિત બની જાય છે સો ધીસ ઇઝ અ ગ્રેટર ચેન્જ દેટ કમ્સ ઇન ટુ ધી ન્યૂ એરા ઓર ન્યૂ એજ એન્ડ દેટ ઇઝ વાય ઇટ ઇઝ નેસેસરી ફોર ફોર અસ ટુ અન્ડરસ્ટેન્ડ ધ ડિફરન્સ and so we can say that it is the age of transition from old to new transition uh, can be explained in the terms of uh, parivartan parivartan એટલે બદલાવ change that is from old to new for this an american professor of english literature and philosophy at uh, the university of chicago his name is j m manley he says very emphatically that the 14th century is regarded as a dark period in the history of england the period of corruption injustice and ignorance now this 14th century 14th sadi ne ek dark period tarike ganvama aave chhe it is the closing part of the uh, closing part of the medieval era or the concluding phase of the medieval era and that is why it is to be uh, taken into consideration that it has its uh, uh, important characteristics the uh, period of corruption injustice and ignorance these three terms are the basic characteristics of the era and that that makes it a dark period now these three terms are uh, almost known to us corruption we call it bhrashtachar injustice it is anyay and ignorance ignorance એટલે અજ્ઞાન તો અજ્ઞાન અન્યાય અને ભ્રષ્ટાચાર આ ત્રણ બાબતો એ ચૌદમી સદીના એટલે કે જે મિડિયવલ પીરિયડ છે એના ક્લોઝિંગ પાર્ટમાં તમને પ્રવર્તમાન જોવા મળે છે અને જેના કારણે આ યુગને ડાર્ક પીરિયડ તરીકે ઓળખવામાં આવે છે સો ફોર્ટીન સેન્ચુરી બિકમ્સ એન ઇમ્પોર્ટન્ટ ટાઈમ ઝોન દેટ ઇઝ ધી કનેક્ટિંગ પીરિયડ બિટવીન ધ મિડિયવલ પીરિયડ એન્ડ ધી રેનેસાન્સ પીરિયડ એન્ડ દેટ ઇઝ વાય it has its own important characteristics it has also the uh, it was also the period of black death the period of black death named so because 
of the great plague which killed half the population of England. Now, in this period, we had a, uh, a remembrance of a great historical as well as a, a social event taken place during this period that is known as Black Death. Black Death is the term given to uh, a disease spread during this uh, era that is uh, uh, that, that happened in the year uh, 1348 1348 uh, plague namni ek bhayankar bimari europe ma failai, particularly in england and ema so half of the population was greatly affected means was died uh, because of this um, disease named plague and this event affected greatly uh, to the uh, social as well as political and uh, economical aspects of the European community and that affected uh, literature ultimately and that we are going to see in the uh, later points we are going to discuss. Uh, against this dark background, two bright in intellectual figures uh, of Chaucer and Wycliffe, they came and they brought light. Two great writers, names, uh, the names are Geoffrey Chaucer and the other, uh, the other name is Wycliffe. These are the two bright stars in this dark background. Background is very dark because the, the period is known as the dark period. Uh, everywhere darkness is spread and because of that reason, uh, uh, the, the stars could be seen very uh, uh, eloquently. So, Chaucer and Wycliffe, they are to be remembered uh, as the bright stars who brought light into the, into the society. Writers were the uh, persons in the society who are spreading literacy as well as uh, knowledge to the people and that is why they are remembered. Now, we are going to see the characteristics of this age of Chaucer. What was the condition of uh, the society? How was the politics? How was uh, the um, condition of trade and commerce, agriculture? All these things uh, are to be uh, understood. Then the uh, characteristics uh, goes on with the condition of women. Uh, how uh, and what kind of literature was written and published, uh, the condition of religion, how was the condition of uh, church, it is to be understood. So, um, in the next lecture, we, we shall continue with the characteristics of the age of Chaucer and uh, try to understand the total scenario of the age of Chaucer. Okay? So, with this point, we stop here. We rather pause here, not stop, but pause here to continue uh, with the characteristics of this age. Uh, the first one is the feeling of national consciousness. We will begin with that topic in the next lecture. Okay? Uh, I hope you must have uh, had a brief idea about the things uh, that are related to this topic. Try to uh, concentrate it uh, after uh, listening to this lecture again and again and uh, try to understand the things properly. Okay, thank you very much for your patient listening. We shall meet in the next lecture.